as you saw, the first thing I did when I got to the convention center was run to the Pokemon Center, which shouldn't be surprising. So let's take a look at the fun things that I got. The world's 2018 Pikachu plush. This is a staple for any world's attendee. Just look at this year's banjo playing electric mouse. The playmat. Truly the best way to experience this year's world's art, and it comes with a carrying tube. Sleeves, want to match your playmat? Look no further. The dice set, there's unfortunately some controversy involved with these dice, but I got it for the coin. The t-shirt, you can't leave the premier Pokemon tournament of the year without buying the shirt first. The hat, I have the hat from every world's I've attended, so this was a must have. The pin, I love collecting pins, so this goes perfectly with my collection. A Quagsire Kutari cutie, I've wanted this for a long time, so I'm glad I could get it. A Swablu secret base keychain, I might have missed the large version of this plush, but I won't miss out on the keychain. Pikachu dressed as Guzma, a new and incredibly important addition to the Pikachu dressed as merchandise collection. Not pictured before, we also got a Mew hat. I got this on Friday because I really love it and I just couldn't deprive myself any longer. I also got a Mewtwo boss collection plush, which is the most perfect Mewtwo plush I've seen in a very long time, so I had to have it. That's it for the merch report, and now it's time for Friday. When the doors opened to the main event hall and we finally stepped inside, the atmosphere was absolutely electric, and you could tell that everybody was dreaming of winning those trophies and playing up on stage for all Pokemon fans to see. Before any matches were played, we all assembled in front of this amazing stage to watch the opening ceremonies, which never failed to make me feel emotional, even when I'm just watching the stream. But this time, I was actually sitting right in front of the action. It was truly unbelievable. One of the coolest things about the world's opening ceremony is that the Pokemon Company always announces at least one new thing going on for Pokemon. This year they announced Tag Team GX cards, which is a really fun idea and I can't wait to see how they shake up the format. You take three prizes for beating them, so we'll really have to strategize how to use them. Also, Zekrom and Pikachu being best friends makes me feel very happy. The next announcement was about the Detective Pikachu movie, which has been off of the radar for quite some time. You could tell the crowd didn't really care about the logo, but we had a great time doing some chants that they are supposedly going to put in the movie. Right after the opening ceremonies, I ran to the line to play the demo of Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, which I am even more hyped about buying in November now. We got to play with the Pokeball Plus, which was great because I was wondering how it would work for people with somewhat larger hands, such as myself. It's kind of small, but it fits perfectly well, and the throwing mechanic wasn't as dumb as I was expecting it to be. Before I got to play though, I had to wait for Junichi Masuda, an original developer of the games if you're not familiar, to finish his own round of the demo, which then turned into him watching my friends and I play, which then allowed us to take a picture with him. That's right, I took a picture with THE Junichi Masuda. You know, the person who composed all of the original Pokemon soundtrack while also programming some of the games and also directing some of the new ones. That's the Masuda I shook hands with and met and I was just a dream come true. Then my friends and I got some delicious pizza, caught lots of unknown, and then walked back to the main hall to watch some battles and explore. The main hall had all sorts of neat displays to enjoy, including many cutouts of Pokemon from the world's artwork that pretty much always included hay and a guitar. They also brought over the Blastoise line Mega Constructs sculpture that was displayed at E3, as well as the Pokemon Terrarium filled with normal size Mega Constructs Pokemon. I really loved this Terrarium because it looked so alive with everybody battling it interacting. There was also an area to simply chill, complete with beanbags, a giant inflatable Pikachu, and a coloring desk that I didn't get in the shot because there were people all over it. Of course, one of the coolest things to see in the main hall is the trophies that were given to the champions. Everybody dreams of owning one of these incredible trophies, and it's nice to be able to at least get close to them. On the right side of the hall, there was yet another giant floating Pikachu hovering over the side event tables. No matter where you went, there was at least one Pikachu hovering nearby. By the side event area, there were also retro Pokemon games. People were always playing stadium 
random multiplayer games and battling it out on Puzzle League, so I never got a turn on Friday. Next to the side event tables was also the prize wall, home to the fun things on which to spend your prize tickets. On Friday, I entered a sealed side event, which ended up being Forbidden Light instead of Celestial Storm. I didn't film the pack opening, but here are my polls. Of course, Pikachu was walking around to greet people, so I got an obligatory Pikachu picture. Eevee was there too, so I got my first ever Eevee picture as well. I was also able to finally meet up with my good friends Aaron, Johnny, and Papa and Mama Blastoise, so we had some great conversation and chilled outside catching Unknown for a while. After watching some more matches, we ventured to a rooftop beer garden where I had a wonderful time talking to friends, former world champions, and simply enjoying the night. When we got hungry, we tried to go to Taco Bell, but it was closed. What Taco Bell closes before midnight? So we ended up at Jack in the Box instead. I didn't take any footage of that adventure, but rest assured that it was exciting. Even though I only experienced Thursday and Friday of Worlds up to this point, I already have had some of the most fun I've had at a Pokemon event in a long time. Being able to hang out with friends I've been meaning to meet up with for years was truly special, and entering that great hall and seeing all of the displays and tables really made me feel emotional. This was my first Worlds experience in a decade, and it started off so perfectly. I still have more stuff to show you from Saturday and Sunday, so keep an eye out for the next Worlds 2018 video. Thanks so much for watching everybody, and I'll catch you all on the flip side.